Okay, so now you're ready to ride. Before the skier or rider enters the water, make sure that an occupant of the boat raises an approved skier down flag. This will signify to other boaters that a person from your boat is in the water. Now move the Superfly weight kite from its transportation position and place it upright in the water. Connect the end of the tow line to the release ball fitting on the front of the handle. This release ball connection serves as the primary release point for the skier rider. When the skier rider lets go of the handle while riding or during a fall, the handle automatically rotates forward and releases the tow line. As the tow line is released, the weight kite, kite lines, and handle come free from the boat connection. This is very important. Always let go of the handle before the kite crashes into the water. Holding onto the handle after the kite hits the water may cause severe damage to the kite or some of its components. Now that the handle is connected to the tow line via the release ball connection, you're ready to get lined up and start weight kiting. With the handle connected to the tow line, the skier rider can now move into position between the two kite control lines. Make sure that the red kite line is on the left and the green kite line is on the skier rider's right. Make sure that the kite is also properly positioned in the water, sitting upright, as shown. With the skier rider properly positioned, the boat operator may slowly motor forward, creating slight tension in the tow line. Again, keep the handle slightly rocked backwards to ensure that the tow ball does not come loose from the handle. The entire Superfly setup becomes fully outstretched at this point and may be again visually inspected for damage and or line tangling. The skier rider should then verbally signal to the boat driver when he or she is prepared to launch. A wake kite launch is similar to a standard deep water start. The wake kite will lift off the water at approximately 8 to 10 miles an hour and ascend to a position above and slightly behind the skier rider. The wake kite will lift off faster if driving into a light breeze. The skier rider will also be aware of the kite lifting off, both visually and by his or her arms being pulled up from tension on the handle. If the kite veers strongly to one side or is headed for a crash, immediately let go of the handle. Do not crash the kite into the water while still holding on to the handle, as shown. General riding and steering. Once the kite is up and flying, get a quick understanding of where the kite is and how it's behaving in the sky. Apply steering input as needed to keep the kite aloft. Steering is simple. Holding onto the handle with both hands spread evenly, tip the handle left to go left or tip the handle right to go right. Strong steering input is not necessary. Just gentle movements of the handle are all that is required. If a small unavoidable breeze is present, it is best to drive directly into it. Wind can upset kite behavior, especially tailwinds and crosswinds. Always avoid those. A crosswind can cause the kite to lean to one side or another, presenting a challenge for straight steering. A tailwind can cause the kite to suddenly lose power and crash. If the kite behaves erratically when wind conditions are calm, and your steering input cannot be blamed, check again to see that all lines and parts are properly connected and not damaged. If, after going over this checklist, the kite is still behaving erratically, contact customer service for assistance. Catching air with the wake kite involves learning to use the upward lift provided by the kite to accent natural wake pop. You should be comfortable steering the kite slowly and smoothly across both wakes before attempting to jump. To set up a jump, steer the kite and edge approximately 20 feet outside the wake, allowing the kite's direction to pull and assist you in the process. Now, once outside the wake, with the kite overhead, tilt it towards the wake. Only about a 10 degree tilt on the handle is necessary here. You'll notice that the kite will begin to pull you towards the wake. As you begin to feel this pull, release your outside edge and start edging towards the wake. At this very same moment, immediately flatten out the steering handle. This will cause the kite to start flying upward in the sky versus across. This is how you get your air. The flattening of the handle is known as flicking the kite. As I mentioned, you need to initiate this kite flick well before reaching the wake. With no further steering input, you will now be able to catch air off of the wake and come down approximately in the middle. Once you are in flight and up in the air, you can still control the kite's behavior as well as where you're going to ultimately land. 
you can steer the kite to control your flight. You can end your ride on the weight kite in one of two ways, falling and letting go of the handle, or intentionally letting go of the handle. In both cases, always let go of the handle before the kite hits the water. After falling or intentionally ending the ride, the kite will drop down to the water surface. Swim to the kite if it is a few feet away. If not, wait for the boat to return and provide assistance. If the kite has landed right side up, you can take the time to reposition for another launch as the boat is returning. If the kite is upside down, you can flip it over or wait for the boat to return and provide assistance in flipping the kite. If you end up crashing the kite into the water and not letting go of the handle, and simultaneously the boat observer does not recognize this happening and does not pull the shackle release lanyard to set the kite free from the boat, you may end up separating one or both kite line releases on the kite lines. This photo shows a separated kite line release mechanism. You can see the handle on the left and the kite line tip on the right. Go through this procedure to reconnect the kite line release should this occur. Note that the line loop is properly positioned through the top of the plastic piece that is connected to the handle. Now connect the two plastic pieces together as shown. Then extend the line loop through the hole on the end of the kite line tip. Now take that line loop and put it underneath the hinge and snap the hinge properly into place. Take special care to make sure that the hinge is properly snapped into place and the line loop is behind the hinge. This is very important. Once it is properly snapped in place, tug on the kite line and the handle to make sure that the connection is strong. Refer also to your user's manual for a step-by-step -step guide on proper connection of a kite line release, as well as the laminated card provided with your Superfly package. Now that you have the kite repositioned and your kite lines all properly connected and lined up again, you're ready for a relaunch. The first step in breaking down the weight kite system is to disconnect all lines from the kite. This does not include the permanently affixed kite bridles, which stay with the kite. To start kite deflation, open valve number three. This is the dump valve on the large leading edge air chamber. Next, open valves numbered one on both kite struts. You'll need to insert the small black plastic tabs on the tip of the valve covers to allow air to escape from these valves. After completely clearing the air out of both kite struts, remove the black plastic tabs before folding the kite up for storage. This is very important. Also, make sure that the kite is completely free of debris, including the kite valves, before folding it up. You must also make sure that the kite is dry before permanently storing it. You can temporarily fold up your kite to get to shore, but later lay the kite out for a brief period and allow it to dry before permanently putting it away.